uh, here I'm going to overview some miscellaneous uh, topic about NCLEX board exam. First one said, delegate the sterile skill. That is dressing change to the RN or LPL. So the rule of RN, if you talk, first of all, if the sterile dressing change it is good to assign the RN or train LPN. And where the no, non-skill care is required, we can delegate the uh, stable client to the nursing assistant. So when need to provide the routine non-skill care, such as bed making or bed bath, routine vital sign check, or put the enema, the CNA can take uh, take over. So assign the most critical client to the RA, right? So assigning the client, determine the plan of care for care for the most critical and unstable client always we delegate for RA. So again, let me read it. The client who are being discharged should have the final assessment done by the RA. So if your patient need fresh post-operative client, just after the surgery who came to the unit, always RA subs to take care of them. The client with a change in condition who need assessment, RN, during the admission or during the discharge or during the transfer, always done by RN. The licensed practical nurse, we call it LPN. What are the rule of NLPN? So LPN can provide care to the client in stable condition, or they can take care of the client under the supervision of NRN or other healthcare provider. And they perform basic therapeutics or preventive care and rehabilitation procedure, like example, sterile dressing change or catheter use, nasogastric tube insertion or application of any, um, I mean, uh, like oropharyngeal suctioning, they can do. So, LPN can monitor the client with IV therapy, monitor, right? So, but admin the IV therapy or IV chemotherapy always aren't supposed to do this, but LPN can monitor it. Insert the urinary catheter feeding tubes, we call nasogastric tube. And also apply the restate under supervision of RN assessment, teaching, medication admin, evaluation, unstable patient cannot be delegated to an unlicensed assistive personnel. Today, I'm going to talk miscellaneous uh, tips. So now we are, body weight is the best indicator for dehydration. NCLEX board asks a question, if a patient has a chronic kidney disease, CKD, or liver problem, patient has a chance to retention of urine, sorry, retention of fluid in the abdomen, we call ascites, or in the feet, we call pitting edema. So if patient retention of fluid in the body, how we can measure it? Just measure the body weight.
So body weight is the best indicator for retention of fluid or dehydration or edema. When patient is in distress, administration of medication is very uncommon or really the best choice. Hmm? So if I have a shortness of breath, you do not give anything in my mouth. Always check for allergy before admin the antibiotics. What next? So now here, the neutropenic patient should not receive vaccine or fresh foods or flour. So like a patient is immunocompromised or a patient WBC go down, a granulocytosis or neutropenic, neutrophil number go down. So it is good not to give them fresh flour or fruits because this is the source of infection and also should not receive the vaccine because the infection control is the most priorities. Natural, uh, natural uh, glycerin patch when we use is administered up to the three times with interval of the five minutes. Hmm? Natural glycerin we use for enzyme. Morphine is contraindicated in pancreatitis because it causes the spasm of sphincter of OD. So the patient who have pancreatitis they complain of severe pain. So we give them pain medication, but not morphine because morphine can cause spasm of sphincter of Audi. Sphincter of Audi, it is the small opening or valve in the second part of duodenum where pancreatic duct open up. Demerol should be given. So if you ask me, if I do not give the morphine as a pain medication, what I will give? Demerol, which should be given. Never give potassium is IV push. Why? Because potassium can cause the cardiac arrest. If you give IV, always potassium good to give a diluted form and very slow by saline solution. In for infant born to an ACV positive mother should receive all immunization on of casual. Do not need to stop. Now to keyword, what is gravida and what is para? Gravida is the number of pregnancy a woman has had regardless of outcome. So how many times she got pregnant, right? This is gravida. And now the para, what is the para? Or what are the parity? Particularly the number of pregnancy, number of pregnancies that reach the viabilities and regardless whether the fetus was delivered alive or stillbirth, the fetus is considered viable at 20 weeks gestation. So easy way to say, gravida means the total number of pregnancy, including the current pregnancy. If I say, what is parity? Parity means the term of preterm abortion and living child children. Now going to go three keywords. One is uh, rubra, 
serosa and elba. So we call lochia assessment. So rubra is the vaginal discharge of almost pure blood that occur during the first few days after the childbirth. So rubra is a bright red blood, but serosa blood is pink and elba, it is the creamy yellow. Rubra is a bloody discharge, but serosa is a pinkish brown serous fluid and elba may be brownish. The rubra, it is common one to three days postpartum time, but serosa five to seven days postpartum, but elba one to three weeks postpartum. If you ask me what are the uh, smell, the rubra no odor or slightly fishy odor. And usually patient or mother use four to eight bed per day and it indicate the normal. But serosa usually no odor. And elba, if it is not infected, no smell, no odor. And it is as like the body odor. Let me read it. So serosa is the serous vaginal discharge that occur four to seven days after delivery. Elba vaginal discharge of decrease the blood, increase the leukocyte that are the final stage of lochia. It occurred seven to 10 days after delivery. And some books say one to three weeks in postpartum care. Sometimes in press board asks a question, the pickers saw from the fire events. In the events of fire, we have to follow the four rules and regulation, like remove the patient, activate the alarm, and attempt to contain the fire by closing. So how we can easily remember them? We remember them, R-A-C-E. R stands for remove the patient from the source of fire, a stands for activate the alarm. C stands for attempt to contain the fire by closing the door. And E stands for extinguish the fire if it can be done safely. Sometimes NPLEX board asks the question from here. And next here, now I'm going to talk about some uh, rules or regulation or some key or terminology about the ethics. First of all, being signed in informed consent form. The patient should know, uh, should know whether the other treatment options are available and should understand what will occur during the procedure. Interoperative, postoperative phases and the risks involved. The possible complication, the patient should also have general idea of the time required for surgery to recovery. In addition, he should have an opportunities to ask any question. So if a patient undergo to the surgical procedure, or if a patient is diagnosed by a major disease, it is always important to explain to the patient before surgical procedure. We explain them what are the alternative treatment options we tell them 
what are the best option for them. But it is their right. If they like, they can refuse. So informed consent. Usually doctor take the informed consent and RN supposed to be there as a witness. And informed consent, this must be obtained from a client or other healthcare proxy for any invasive procedure. And it is obtained by the healthcare provider like physis physician, while the nurse role is to ensure or ensure that consent is signed and in the chart prior to the procedure, very important. Next, the first nursing intervention in a quadriplace client who experiencing autonomic dyslexia. So what is autonomic dyslexia? So autonomic dyslexia is a syndrome in which there is a sudden onset of excessively high blood pressure. And it is more common in the people with spinal cord injury that involve the thoracic nerve of the spine or above the T6 or above. So autonomic dyslexia is to elevate his head as high as possible. When we take care of them, it is important to know. Now go, what is veracity? Veracity means you have to adherence to the truth. You fight for the truth. You behind for the truth. So veracity is a truth and is essential component of the therapeutic relationship between a healthcare provider and his patient. The other keyword is called liability. Liability means obligation one incurred or might incur through acting or falling off act. Then what is beneficence? Beneficence is the duty to do no harm and the duty to do good. And there is an obligation in the patient care to do not harm and an equal obligation to assist the patient. So easy way to explain beneficence means to do good, not to harmful for the patient. Example of beneficent action, like a patient is uh, continuous smoking, you encouraging not to smoking or smoking sedation. This is good for the patient. This is beneficial. Like a patient is drawing in the swimming pool, you take it, take them out and start the resuscitation, CPR. This is good for the patient. Now, non-maleficence is the duty to do no harm. So if you do not know, better not to interfere. If you do something good for the patient, just go and do it. But if you do not know how to, to do good, it is better at least not to harm for the patient. So non maleficence means to do no harm. Example of a non maleficence action like stopping a medication that is shown to be harmful. Like a patient has a respiratory problem or depression of respiratory center and patient doctor prescribe the high dose morphine. You hold it and make sure 
everything is okay. And you contact the healthcare provider and inform my patient has a shortness of breath or respiratory system is depressed. Should I give this eye dose? Right? So now another uh, information here, tyramine rich food such as aged cheese, chicken liver, avocado, banana, also meat, um, salami. So some patient, psychiatry patient is, you have, if your patient take the psychiatric medication, it is good to tell them not to take the uh, tyramine containing food because tyramine containing food and some kind of psychiatry medication together can cause um, hypertensive crisis. Hmm? Psychiatric medication means like monoamine oxide inhibitor or shortly called MAO inhibitor. And monoamine oxide inhibitor, this medication help your patient um, uh, act because this act antidepressant. Example is um, phenylazine, most common, right? So tyramine restricted food is a new talk, like meat. What kind of meat? No organ meat or no preservative meat. Some vegetables like banana, avocado, and raisin. No, uh, some fruits like banana is a fruits. On some dairy product like uh, cheese, but what kind of cheese? Hmm? Aged cheese except cottage. Hmm? It also no coffee, no tea, and no chocolate. So, so all yummy, yummy food is a uh, tyramine restricted list. So next here, mm -hmm. so um, next here, so, People with obsessive compulsive disorder release that their behavior is unreasonable but are powerless to control it. The person who is obsessive compulsive disorder, they can understand I'm not doing, um, I'm doing something bad, but unfortunately, it is not their control. So they know they're doing bad or it is not perfect, but they do not know how to control it, right? And this is actually more common in obsessive compulsive disorder. So now go here, I said, let me read it but no powerless to control it. So this is a key obsession or obsessive and compulsiveness. So they need high need of routine life. Hmm? Some limit, but do not interrupt their compulsive act. Basically, the treatment option of obsessive compulsiveness, we try to stopping the techniques or anti-anxiety agents or SSRI is good option. A significant toxic risk associated with uh, close up pain. The administration is blood dyscreases, right? So it is important if your patient need to take close up in, we have to regular check their WBC count. Very important for NCLEX board. Close up in a typical psychiatric medication. Hmm? Close up in 
also called second generation antipsychotic. Example like clozapine, olazapine, resperidol, eripiprazole. Hmm? So what we need to know for Boretal, the good news of clozapine or atypical psychotic, atypical antipsychotic like clozapine, they have few extra pyramidal symptom. Hmm? But if my patient take clozapine, we could monitor the patient for metabolic change because they can cause hyperglycemia or diabetic kit mellitus type 2 dyslipidemia or weight gain. So when your client need to take a typical antipsychotic like clozapine, we monitor them for agranulocytosis. What does it mean, agranulocytosis? It is the low WBC count. If they have agranulocytosis, they will complain for fever, body ache, chill, or sore throat. Basically, the sign of flu, the medication must be stopped immediately. And this is very serious condition, agranulocytosis. The adverse effect of haloperidol. So what are the adverse effects of haloperidol? Admin include, they can cause drowsiness, insomnia, weakness, headache, extra pyramidal symptoms such as um, echinacea or TD or dystonia. So what is hypervigilance? It is the sign of post-traumatic stress disorder. 